All right, guys, you have been asking for more <clears throat> of the old school stuff. So, Zach Evanesh here, undergroundstrengthcoach.com. And this is an interesting article, guys, really interesting because, first of all, this magazine is from well before I was born, uh, 1967, right here. <clears throat> Larry Scott, Frank Zane, okay, who's that? Bill Peanuts West. Yes, the original West Side Barbell creator. And then on the cover, we've got Dave Draper. This is Muscle Builder Magazine, and then it became Muscle Builder and Power. So this was a Joe Weider publication. You guys can see here Harold Poole, where they're talking about protein. And they just had such great names for everything. Super Pro 101. See Dave Draper going into his leaning out years. When he lived in New Jersey, he was a very, <clears throat> I guess, heavy guy, we could say. Look at Larry Scott, built like a tank. Look at the size of those pipes. Pretty impressive, guys. The difference is you. Now, I'm going to be talking about an article that really hits home for me because it talks about mindset. And here's interesting, guys. Looking at Frank Zane here. Great physique. And, of course, today, you know, this kind of physique would you know, be semi-competitive at the state level. How crazy is that? <clears throat> Today, chemical warfare. That's how it is. So here's the article I'm going to talk to you guys about. It's Freddie Ortiz, some of the biggest arms in bodybuilding. This guy was strong. I mean, he was a tank. Big arms. This is him in his younger years. Uh, doesn't say what age he is, but I believe here he was a teenager. And then here, look at this. The guy was just a tank. Mr. Universe. So let's check out this article. Look what it says, guys. And I'm going to bounce around a little bit. It may not be your physical type that is holding you back in becoming great. It may be that you're suffering from momism. Momism may be the reason why you are not a champ by Joe Weider. And we've got a photo here of somebody deadlifting here. I'm trying to, you know, put a, a face to the name or a name to the face and it might be Dr. Ken, or it might be one of the guys that trained out of Bill Peanuts West's garage. I don't <clears throat> remember his name, but let's give this a little bit of a read, and I want you guys to stay with me so you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about here. When I walk into a gym, it's a simple task for me to spot a champion or a champ to be who is on his way to the top of the muscle mountain. How? Is it by looking at his massive arms, his shoulders, his back, his abs, or his legs? Scroll down a little bit. No, it isn't any of these things. More important than any other single factor, even more important than the physical factor, is the mental factor. Guts, persistence, and determination. Now, I'm going to go <clears throat> and read extra over here. Talking about when they said, first came across Dave Draper being heavy set. So look at this. Look at what they talk about with what I call the what it takes factor. Okay? He wasn't afraid, as you may be, to give his all to each workout, to bring out the line in him. To reach the top, a budding star must be able to force out rep after rep when he wants to quit. Force himself to handle heavier and heavier and heavier weights. Train harder and harder to create the muscular ache. Because without muscle ache, there can be no muscle growth. Must push back the pain barrier and enjoy the thrill of exerting himself against heavier and heavier weights in his exercises. Be consistent in his workouts. Never missing a workout. Have faith in himself that he will be able to carry. We'll go right here to... <clears throat> page 50, where we continue. Sorry, guys. Back to momism. And so it talks about Larry Scott, only 150 pounds when he started. Reg Park, 140 pounds when he started. Harold Poole, 135 pounds. And let's go back to here, guys. This is something that I still talk to athletes about today, and it's evident that it's been an issue since well before I was born, and it will always be an issue. Do you have the guts to be a champion? Are you another Dave Draper, Larry Scott, or Harold Poole? And for the athletes, you would be just mentioning other athletes. 
A lot of people think it's just genetics or it's just luck, but it is the attitude and the work ethic. How do you develop this attitude? Okay, it goes down to say attitude, you know, like the body you are striving so hard to develop, you must always strive to develop the right attitude towards your training. You must strive to develop the mental toughness so necessary to develop the physical, your physical impressiveness. So the mind and body are never trained separately. I always talk about training them together. <clears throat> Look at this here. The curse of momism. If your attitude is now more negative than positive, more hold back than charge forward, more fearful than determined, then you are under a deadly curse that affects many in this country, the curse of momism. And it talks about <clears throat> where momism was coined, where the term was coined. The great American author Philip Wiley first coined the word momism, describing what he thought was a general breakdown in the manliness of this country. His comments are particularly apt in bodybuilding and weightlifting. Momism consists of two things. First, an overindulgent and overprotective attitude of a mother for her child. And secondly, a corresponding tendency for the child to regard the mother as a god who can do no wrong. Such overprotection and shielding of the child from the realities of life insulates him, does not condition him for the problems and hard knocks of life, keeps him from healthy competition, keeps him from enjoying the vigorous movement of physical exertion and accomplishment. In an oversimplification, you might call the child a sissy. But this attitude is usually not so obviously apparent as the stereotype picture of a child in a long curly hair and feminine appearing clothes. It is usually more subtle, less obvious, but nevertheless still there. Don't lift that sweetheart. You might strain yourself. Don't push that thing, darling. You might get a rupture. Be careful, son. You might hurt yourself. So guys, they give you a couple answers here of what to do. And listen, it's now the year 2019. Things have not changed. We still have people afraid of training, afraid of doing sport practice and lifting weights. It's got to be one or the other. They must stop lifting in season. Too busy, right? Too much. Is it too much? I ask parents, what about... When you were 14 or 10 years old, summertime, you were outside at 7 a.m. and you came home at 10 p.m. You ran and rode your bike and played a million different sports every day for 12 to 14 hours a day. Kids don't play 12 to 14 hours a month anymore. Things to do about this. Recognize the problem, okay? Stop basically sheltering yourself. Or if you're a parent, encourage your child to work hard. Resolve to forge ahead. Okay, the journey of a thousand miles begins with but a single step. Determination and resolve, no matter your present physical condition, are the keys to stepping and win. And look at this, telling you you're going to be a Mr. America. Okay, what's the next thing? Psych yourself to success. Prepare the mind. Don't just say, I think I'll do it. You got to put your foot down and say, I am going to do this. Okay, and then of course, freedom from fear. It's okay to be a little bit afraid, but don't let it cripple you and put up a roadblock to you moving forward, okay? The eager thrill of improvement and the determination to continue forging ahead to victory. Defeat momism. Show the steel-forged character you have within and you within you. Do and you will win. Action will speak for you. Show the way of correctly aimed mental attitudes that are so vital to your physical training results. Determined to start today to throw off any of the shackles of momism that might imprison you and will reserve your place on the winner's stand. Okay, look at this. Leroy Colbert, I think he was one of the first bodybuilders with 20-inch arms. Okay, the physiques of the guys from before I was born, 1967. Here we have some early articles of the original West Side Barbell. They're talking about sectional development which basically is um, rack training or training from positions, pulling from boxes, okay? The mighty Pat Casey, partial deadlifts in the rack. <clears throat> Here we have Bill Peanuts West doing front squats, but looks like partial range of motion. Partial range of motion incline bench. You guys can see 
the pins right here. Guys, nobody ever got strong without the struggle. Look at this, early days, Sergio Oliva. Mr. Canada, Mr. Universe, Sergio Oliva. Built like a tank, Frank Zane. Guys, success is no accident. Who's the first man to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger? Chet Yorton. There's Frank Zane in the middle. Don Howard, student of Vince Gironda. Ricky Wayne, right here. Look at the physiques on them. Much different than the chemical warfare of today. Springing to the weeder generation of tablets. There's Harold Poole, who I mentioned earlier. He also did powerlifting. In fact, a lot of these bodybuilders trained with a blend of powerlifting and bodybuilding. Old school, golden era bodybuilding. Lots of free weights. You don't get built like this by doing pump up weights. You got to lift heavy, guys. There's no two ways about it. We've already seen this. Frank Zane in his younger years. And then, not sure why we need any gossip. Nobody has the time for gossip. We've got the time for, like I say, we don't need the separation. Look at the flexibility of Larry Scott. Very impressive. Small waist. Jack Dellinger. Saw these photos earlier of Larry Scott. Harold Poole. Dave Draper, one of my favorites. Here's the kind of men I build. The advertising really would pull you guys in. Okay? Vince Gironda. This was a weight set from back in the day. Neck harness. Okay? Gravity boots. Free weights. Dumbbells. Swing bells. Wrist roller. Pretty darn impressive. Pick out the body you want in, your pl in place of your puny weakness. All right, friends, Zach Evnish from undergroundstrengthcoach.com. Please drop a comment below, like the video, subscribe, and please share. That's going to help me keep sharing these videos. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.